Hello everyone, my name is Hashim and I am an assistant professor at the Department of Engineering and Applied Science at Thompson Rivers University. Today I will present an asymptotically stable observer-based controller for attitude tracking with systematic conversions. The proposed solution consists of two parts. First, the rigid body's attitude and the angular velocity are estimated. Second, the observed attitude and the angular velocity are used by the proposed robust controller. Today's outline includes abbreviation and the preliminaries of all math notation. Next, I will present the true attitude dynamics and the available measurements, followed by the presentation of the full state observer with guaranteed performance. Next, we will go to the observer-based controller with guaranteed convergence. Next, we will look at the numerical results and I will finish off with concluding remarks. In this presentation, I denotes inertial frame, B denotes body frame, R is the set of real numbers, R n by m is the set of real numbers with dimension n by m. This is a notation for equilibrium norm. SO3 is the special orthogonal group of order 3. R belongs to SO3 denotes attitude, or commonly known as orientation of the rigid body, where the set SO3 includes matrices 3 by 3 where the matrix in this set, if it's multiplied by its transpose, it is equal to identity, and the determinant of any matrix in this set always equal to positive 1. Here is a skew-symmetric matrix representation. So if we have a vector of three elements, this is the skew-symmetric representation of this vector. And S3 is a set of vectors that belongs to R4, where the norm of the vector in this set always equal to 1. So the vector in this set is called as a unit quaternion. It includes two components, Q0 and Q, where Q0 belongs to R and Q belongs to R3. The attitude of a rigid body or orientation of a rigid body can be obtained from unit quaternion by this form. And here is the equilibrium point. Now let's go to attitude dynamics and the measurements. The attitude estimation problem is a major subtask in the field of robotics and control applications, especially automated and semi-automated applications. It is very important for the operation of unmanned aerial vehicles, satellites, rotating radars, underwater vehicles, ground vehicles, and many more. To better understand the attitude estimation problem, let's turn to the figure on the slide. The goal is to obtain the unknown vehicle's orientation and the angular velocity in a moving frame, also known as a body frame, with respect to a fixed inertial frame. Again, the attitude problem concerns a rigid body whose orientation and angular velocity are unknown. As such, an estimator is needed and afterwards, controller is required. Attitude can be reconstructed using a set of measurements. However, we cannot use the reconstructed attitude to control the rigid body's orientation and angular velocity. Hence, our objective is to build an observer to observe the unknown attitude and angular velocity. Afterwards, the estimated data are used to successfully control the rigid body's orientation and angular velocity. Now let's move to attitude dynamics. The true attitude dynamics of a rigid body rotating in the three-dimensional space or 3D space can be represented by the following equation, where Q denotes unit quaternion, omega denotes angular velocity, and the tau denotes input torque or rotational torque. Note that all the red components, namely rigid body's unit quaternion and the angular velocity are unknown. As such, our main objective in this work is to estimate Q and omega, and then drive Q hat to Q and omega hat to omega. Also, our main objective in this work is to drive Q to QD and omega to omega D, where Q hat is unit quaternion estimate, omega hat is angular velocity estimate, QD is the desired unit quaternion and omega d is the desired angular velocity. It is important to assume that the number of observations as well as 
measurements in equation 2 has to be greater than or equal to 2 at each time instant. Here q hat is the estimate of q. Now let us define the error between q hat and q as is shown in this equation. Similarly, let omega hat be the estimate of omega and define the error between omega hat and omega as is shown in this equation. Let QD be the desired unit quaternion and define the error between QD and Q as follows. Let omega D be the desired angular velocity and define the error between omega D and omega as shown here. Now let's switch gears and discuss the concept of guaranteed performance. The objective of guaranteed performance is to force the error to start with a non-large set and decay systematically and asymptotically to settle within a non-small set. In order to achieve this objective, we need to define the following elements. Full state observer with guaranteed performance. Taking into consideration guaranteed performance, let's look at the following attitude and angular velocity observer design. Now let's discuss the theorem. Remember the true attitude dynamics. Let us suppose that assumption 1 holds true. Therefore, n is greater than or equal to 2. This way, the components that we see here are globally bounded. Also, starting from any initial condition, all the error components converge asymptotically to the origin. Now let's talk about the stability proof. Given the potential function LO, we arrive to the inequality that we see here, where EO combines the estimation errors of orientation and the angular velocity. Now let's go to the observer-based controller with guaranteed convergence. Consider the following control design. Now let us discuss the following theorem, keeping in mind the true attitude dynamics. Let us suppose that assumption 1 holds true. This way, n is greater than or equal to 2. Hence, the following components are globally bounded. Also, we can see that starting from any initial conditions, all the error components converge asymptotically to the origin. Once again, let's discuss the stability proof. Given LT the potential function, where LC is as follows, we obtain the following inequality. Although the observer-based controller is proposed in continuous form, this slide shows the same observer-based controller in its discrete form. Alright, now it's time to look at the numerical results. Let's consider the following observations. The body frame measured values are assumed to be corrupted by zero mean noise with a standard deviation of 0.08. The initialization parameters were set as shown here. And the desired angular velocity was defined as you can see here. Finally, the design parameters were set as you can see here. The figure on the slide shows body frame vectors where the measurements are plotted as red, blue, and magnetosolid line, while the true data are plotted as a black dash line. As you can notice, high level of uncertainties is affecting the measurements. This figure shows the strong tracking capabilities despite uncertain measurements and large initialization error in unit quaternion.
Here the true orientation is marked as blue dash line. The estimates are depicted as a red center line and the desired trajectories are shown in black solid line. This figure demonstrates fast convergence of the error components starting from large values to the origin. So here Q tilt 0 converges successfully to 1. Once again, this figure demonstrates fast convergence of the error in angular velocity starting from large values to the origin. And the lower portion of this figure shows the boundedness of the control input or rotational torque. In summary, this work addressed the challenge of velocity-free attitude tracking performance based only on measurements obtained from low-cost inertial measurement units. We have proposed a novel computationally cheap unit quaternion observer-based controller that ensures almost global asymptotic stability of the overall closed-loop signals. The transient and the steady-state performance of the attitude tracking error has been shown to follow the dynamically reducing boundaries predefined by the user. And finally, the simulation results demonstrated high robustness and fast adaptation of the proposed solution at a low sampling rate. And thank you for being part of this presentation.